NVIDIA stock, quite the darling of the stock world for quite a while. And if you watch our past videos, we told you to avoid it. It was overvalued and it's great timing because we were saying things were overvalued for years before and stocks kept going up. So we looked wrong, but now things are starting to play out a little bit better for us. So let's pull up NVIDIA in our software. Look at that spike from the base of COVID up into that top. So what was it at the base of COVID? At the base, it was... I'll look it up right now. Around 50 bucks. 50 bucks. and it got March to, 18th. Yeah. 11, 22, 21. It got to about $350 a share. And now it's at 170 100%. and its low was 108. Yeah. 108.13. So guys, Amazing. these falls happen and they happen quick. And all the hype strips out there, they all they pay attention to is this. Especially this part. Oh, Paul, you don't get it. Guys, when you buy a stock, what are you buying, Mo? Buying a company. You're buying a piece of a company. That's it. And if you overpay, it is possible that even when the... Co it's actually very likely, yeah, it's likely. Exactly. that even when the stock's fundamentals, the company's fundamentals get better, it'll do worse. Cisco, Intel, look at all these companies. My, even Microsoft, go look at them from 2000 peak to today. Their stock is not up the same proportion as their revenue and profit. Cisco and Intel are still below their all-time highs from 2000, even though revenue and profit have gone up two or three times. Yeah, look at NVIDIA. I mean, it basically doubled its revenue from 2020 to 2022, and the stock's fallen, what, half? Well, from 2020, it was it's actually up still. The, the stock price? Oh, yeah, the stock price is. But I yeah. mean, the stock price should be, if this was the chart... Correct. Should so, be up here. So to me, I look at 2021. No. What are it doing for 2021? About 24 billion. To tw 28 billion? Yep. But yet the stock is down from 3, 345 to, to 118 and 170 now. Yep. That's the point. It's like, it's not just about, if you believe that this, that this makes no sense, then you have to believe that it's possible this makes no sense. Yeah. I will say with this, I guarantee this price is going to fall with the rest of the market and there, this, is, this number will make sense at some point. Oh, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So here's the deal. If you pay a reasonable price for a company, it re so there's three questions I always ask, and this is what determines my, my process. One, do I think this company will be around for the next 10 or so years? And I basically mean for the foreseeable future. If the answer is yes, I go to the next question. Do I think the company will have more revenue and profit 10 years from now than it does today? If the answer is yes, I go to the third question. And the most important, the hardest one to answer, can I pay a reasonable price today for that future growth potential? If the answer is no, which is no, usually 98% of the time in this market, in this market, I move on, but there will be a time when that no becomes yes, a lot more. And then you guys will be saying, Paul, every stock's a buy. It's just amazing to me. <laughs> That I was at dinner this weekend with somebody who said, oh, Paul, you know, you know, Blackstone agrees with you that the market's going to, that the, the, the economy is going to collapse. I'm like, I never said the economy is going to collapse. He's like, well, yeah. I'm like, no, I didn't. I'm like, I'm actually very bullish on the U.S. economy. When people talk about China, I'm like, whoa, time out. China might surpass us, but the U.S. economy is still going to grow and grow well. I'm very optimistic. Are there signs that there might be cracks in the economy? Sure. And just like stocks, do I believe stocks in the long run will outperform all our, most other assets? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean you over pay at all times. That's the key difference here. So let's look at NVIDIA's eight pillars. Okay. I'm not worried about this 2.9%. In fact, I'm surprised it's not 29% <laughs> shares outstanding because when stocks are overpriced, companies tend to issue a lot of shares out there because they're like, Hey, these people out here are stupid. Let's just give them more shares. Correct. Now, obviously 85 and 91 times five-year earnings and five-year free cash flow. Yeah. And the other thing is guys, there's already, we've already seen a slowdown with the other chip companies and the other people out there saying, oh, there's a slowdown in, in earnings and, and revenue growth, et cetera. So let's go to the quarterly numbers. There's one pillar that I'm really impressed with here. Oh, look at this. Mo I'm, I'm <laughs> guess what it is. Mo. What's up? 5.93, same quarter last year, 7.1. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's already seeing so it's a decline. Yeah. It's already seeing a decline. Okay. What's the pillar that you're, let me go back Take to. Take a look and you let me know. Oh. I'm 19.7% ROIC. Yeah. So guys, what does this mean? <laughs> Return on invested capital is what Mo, oh, not Mo, you're welcome. Charlie Munger and uh, <laughs> yeah, Munger and Buffett talk about basically a moat. They get a high return on the money invested in the business. Now, guys, I'm doing a lot of research lately on ROIC. I really realize the value in this. And I'm trying to learn as much as I can about ROIC. 
It's sparked because of my real estate. I own a lot of apartment buildings. I have this benefit of apartment buildings that every 10 years, I can do a massive renovation on a property and really increase my revenue and profit. That's what I want in a company. I want a company that can put their money to use and keep driving up that incremental return on invested capital and keep driving more and more, more and more money to the bottom line. As an example, let's say every dollar extra, they made 20% on their money. If they took... $4 $4 billion of free cash, $5 billion of free cash flow and reinvested back in the company, they should be able to add $1 billion next year to their profit. Oof. Yeah, that's a huge number. Me gusta mucho. <laughs> yeah, me gusta mucho. Spanish lingo for you there. That's the point of ROIC. If this was 3%, give me the money back as yep. dividends because you guys are terrible at investing the money in the, in the company. Exactly. You're actually, you're going bo- you're gonna, to you're gonna borrow at 7 or 8%. You're going to lose money. You're going to lose money for your investors. <laughs> yep. That's the big key here when you're looking at companies. And companies like this, the high, high ROIC, don't just go off that. You no, got to no, make no. sure they have other opportunities to reinvest. Right, Mo? Yeah, but it's a really nice pillar to have. It's a really nice pillar. I'd rather have the high one than the low one. Yep. I mean, everything else looks pretty solid. I like the fact their net income growth and cash flow growth are pretty similar. Reasonable debt. Let's see what the analysts have to say. All right. So, wow, look at this. Even though they're seeing a drop here, they think it gets back up and doubling in the next. And that's a lot of analysts right here, 23. Yeah. Now, remember, the, the, this market has a 12% um, estimated compounded annual growth rate for the next 10 years. That's pretty high. Yeah, it is. Let's look at the revenue growth. Pretty solid. <laughs> Yeah, it's all over the place. It is all over, but overall, it's pretty solid. It's so guys, correct. every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Before we do stock analyzer tool, one of the things we do on this channel is we don't believe in just value investing. We believe in reading charts and trading stocks. I like the long-term and swing trade. And day trading is just a lot of work, so I try to avoid it. I'm pretty lazy about that. So Mo, why don't you show everybody on the uh, charts what NVIDIA... Because guess what? When it comes to charts... It doesn't matter what the asset is. Right. It doesn't matter what the fundamental, you don't care about that. You right. care about price movement. So one thing, I mean, we're seeing, the, I think that we're, based on looking at the S&P, I think we're getting to that peak where we go into another trough, just based on the little resistance point. So I look at something like NVIDIA and it's running right into that 200 day moving average. And I like that because this volume is declining. So declining volume running into a major moving average, like the 200 day moving average means you're going to more likely than not have a fall in the stock because you need a lot of volume, a lot of buyers in there to push a stock price through its 200-day moving average. So let me come over here and let's just take a peek at this up up a little bit closer. Guys, if I'm you, I'm waiting until we get this red line to roll over. Yellow line comes up here and we turn this into some kind of short position. And this thing can have a lot of room to run to this downside, this 115 or whatever that low, 108 was the low. Yeah. And the reason being, I repeat what Mo just said. Based on charts. Based on charts yep. and based on running into the 200 day moving average, which yeah. is a very strong resistance point with declining volume. Exactly. If this volume here was if, increasing. Yep. If this volume here was green and it was increasing and we had volume all the way up here over this yellow line, which is the average volume for the day, I would say, guys, you're blowing through this thing. I, I wouldn't look at shorting this. But right now, because the volume is coming down overall, I would say, this thing might run it, not be able to get through that 200 and turn into a great short. I want you to all remember, I'm a value investor, but I also like charts. I still look at my charts for things like my option plays oh, yeah. when it comes to selling options on the assets I own or the assets I want to own. So when I'm looking at this right here, if I owned NVIDIA, for example, and I want to sell a covered call, I might be more aggressive on it because it's hitting this 200-day moving average yeah. where I could probably sell a much closer covered call with the expectation of it goes down. Can I be wrong? Of course. Absolutely. Like I would look at this and say, let's say I want to sell a covered call for December 31st, whatever, end of the year. I might look and say, I might go right here at 190. Yeah, it's pretty close. The delta is probably maybe 0.2, but the odds of it breaking through that are pretty low. So that's when I would say, maybe this is a good time to sell an aggressive covered call. So let's use our stock analyzer tool and now decide what price are we willing to pay for NVIDIA? Oh, right. So Mo and I are going to do it separately. I'm going to do a 10-year analysis. Okay. Um, I forgot what the analyst estimates for revenue growth were. Eh, okay. Okay, so as the stock gets bigger, we need to, I mean, even though, look, look at the 10-year, 24% annualized yeah. growth, you, you can't expect that for a long term. And you're probably going to be like, what the heck, Paul? You're crazy. Well, I'm crazy then. <laughs> so guys, the stock analyzer tool is so useful. It's actually our most popular part. When we look at the data of our site on the thousands of users, what they spend their time on, it's like 60% of their time is spent on this. And the reason being 
It allows them to decide a price to pay, not including balance sheet, of a stock based on its future growth potential and cash flow and earnings. That's simple. And your desired return. And the desired return is where you put your margin of safety in. The higher your desired return, the more margin of safety. And that's the big key here. All right. So I'm going to do, okay. This is pretty, oh, PE, sick. <laughs> that's a little high on the PE side and right that's now. The, and that's the thing. People think like, um, people think that because of the PE already being high, that you should stay at a higher PE. Yeah. Guys, you have to look at historical averages, but also increase for more growth potential, but most importantly, for a higher return on invested capital. If you knew that the company could invest its money at 25% returns forever, you'd be crazy to pay 15 PE for the company. But remember, just because this company's five-year ROIC is 19.7%, doesn't mean it's going to do that forever. Correct. You still have to have a margin. So Mo, yes. tell me your assumptions here. So I did five, seven, and nine for revenue growth. We were very close. Five, eight, and 11. Profit margin, 20, 23, 26. 20, 24, 28. Wow. 20, 23, 26 for free cash. I margin. did 22, 24, 26 tighter. Higher. I started higher, but I went tighter on it. Okay. PE 14, 16, 18. I did 15, 16, 17. And same, same thing for price to free cash flow. 14, yep. 16. And 12 and a half, 15 and 17 and a half percent. I did 12, 15, 18. Okay. So we were pretty close. Yeah. Hit the analyze button. The stock is 170. My prices are basically under 40 at 50 and somewhere in the 40. So basically under 50. And I have a stock on my watch list at 75. Doesn't mean I'm buying it there. It means I'm going to reassess and if I want to sell puts at lower prices, like in the 50s for it, I will do so. But guys, look at this. 11% revenue growth and these huge numbers, I'm still only at $50 per share. Right. It's just math. Go ahead, Mo. Yeah, I'm uh, 32 to 45 with a middle ground of about $39. My, my watch list price is $80. And remember, guys, for the people who said like, oh, come on, it's not going to hit 50. Would you have thought just a year ago that it was going to drop 44% in one year and actually <laughs> even further if you include the lowest price of 108? And it was 50 on 320 2020. Yep. I know that the company has gotten much better revenue growth and whatnot, but also look at the computer industry that is slowing. Yep. So, all right, guys, subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much. If you like our software, we have a risk free offer. Sign up, use it for a month. If you don't like it, email us after th right before 30 days is up. You get your money back, no questions asked. Thank you very much.